World Food Summit held in Rome in 1996, the world community reaffirmed its commitment to work together to eradicate hunger. Four years later, the UN member states set eight Millennium Development Goals, including the ambitious goal of eradicating extreme poverty and hunger. As part of this goal, the United Nations General Assembly declared their commitment to half the proportion of people who suffer from hunger by 2015. The good news is that many countries have achieved the target or are very close to doing so. The bad news is that about 800 million people still face chronic undernourishment in the world today. But the world has not always approached ending hunger in the same way. In the 1960s, when the swelling population threatened to outgrow food supply, the main solution was thought to be producing more food. The Green Revolution ushered in agricultural technologies that resulted in dramatic increases in food production, which suddenly helped prevent food shortages and hunger in many places. Then, an economic crisis shocked the world between 1972 and 1975. World food prices rose sharply, and with them, hunger and unrest. While many believed that the way to prevent hunger was to simply produce more food, there was clearly much more to the story. In 1981, a Nobel Prize winning economist named Amartya Sen showed that many countries face famine in the midst of an abundance of food. How was that possible? While most people at risk of hunger already knew it, it took Sen's work to change prevailing beliefs. Food production was only one piece of the hunger puzzle. The real problem was that many people did not have access to the abundance of food produced. It became clear that to eradicate hunger, one must fight poverty and inequality. At this moment, the UN member nations are defining new sustainable development goals with new targets to work towards for 2030, including new targets to eradicate hunger. But how do we really know how many people are hungry in the world? How is hunger measured? Specialists have been working to answer this question for decades, and a lot of progress has been made. To begin with, they agree that it is helpful to think more broadly about what they call food insecurity. Food insecurity goes beyond the physical sensation of hunger. It includes the adequacy of the food supply, people's access to food, and even things like water, sanitation, and healthcare, which affect people's nutrition. It helps us think about the social, economic, and political causes of hunger. There is another thing specialists agree on. There is no single way to measure all these aspects of food insecurity. One of the measures used to track progress towards the 2015 hunger target is the estimate of how many people are undernourished. FAO calculates this every year for each country by analyzing how much food is available, how much food is needed, and by determining what proportion of the population may not have access to the food they need. It is useful for monitoring national and regional trends but does not identify who is undernourished and where they live. Other measurement tools are needed to get a more complete picture. To help fill this gap, in 2013, FAO launched the Voices of the Hungry project and a new global tool called the Food Insecurity Experience Scale. The FIS provides information about the adequacy of people's access to food and the severity of their food insecurity by asking them directly about their experiences. To understand how the FIS was born and what it measures, let's go back to history. Soon after Sen described hunger in the midst of plenty, evidence of hunger in one of the world's wealthiest countries confirmed his theory. Holes in the social safety net of the United States in the 1980s caused a notable increase in the number of people seeking emergency food assistance. To document the problem and advocate for actions to address it, activists and researchers sought ways to measure it. 
Nutrition researchers at Cornell University set out to find a way to understand the experience of hunger from the perspective of those who had lived it. To do this, they talked to women in a rural area in the state of New York about times when they had experienced hunger. All of the women described going through a similar process. First, they worried about not having enough food. And then, to stretch food resources, they changed their eating in ways that worsened the quality of their diets. As their situation grew more severe, they caught portion sizes, skipped meals, and eventually went without eating for one or more days. This new understanding of the experience of hunger inspired the development of the U.S. Household Food Security Survey model, which has been used to monitor food security in the USA since 1995. With time, this experience-based approach crossed national borders, and food security skills were adapted for use in Latin America and many other countries. The results were remarkable. They showed that people in North America, Latin America, Asia, and Africa all seem to experience food insecurity in a similar way. These results convinced FAO that this approach could be used worldwide and paved the way for the Voices of the Hungry project. The FAO Statistics Division developed the FIAS which provides reliable information about the severity of people's food insecurity quickly and at low cost by asking people eight simple questions about their access to adequate food. FAO is already using the FIS to monitor food insecurity severity in 150 countries with financial support from the United Kingdom and Belgium. More importantly, FAO is offering technical assistance to countries to apply the tool in their own national surveys, which will provide them with more detailed information about who is food insecure, where they live, and the potential causes and consequences of experiencing food insecurity. That is the beauty of this new tool. It is easy to apply and can be used in surveys with other questions in areas as different as agriculture and health, shedding light on the causes of food insecurity and its effects in different places. The FIS brings us a step closer to hearing the voices of the people who struggle every day to have access to safe and nutritious food.